Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for Monday, the 10th of May, 2021. Well, gosh, we're almost to the middle of the month. I can't, I can't believe how quickly time is passing. You know, I, it's just amazing to me. My uh, oldest son got his second shot uh, on Saturday, so, and then I think uh, it won't be long until my daughter-in-law and my youngest son uh, have their second shots and so hopefully sometime this summer we can get together and see each other and which we haven't for a long time so I'm just hoping that uh, everything works out and everybody does well and everybody stays well and <laughs> we can all see each other again So I hope everybody had a good week. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> and, uh, uh, mostly all I do here are, uh, well, sometimes I do other videos besides this and the Esoteric Influences one on uh, on Sundays, but um, sometimes I'll do a rune divination. I do a, I do a magical forecast on the blog every day. Well, Monday through Friday anyway. And uh, uh, in it, I do a rune divination, a three rune uh, use three runes to do it, and and uh, if it if it looks good, you know, if it looks like something I want to talk about, uh, then I'll just do a quick five minute rune divination uh, explanation, basically, and uh, I put that up on the blog too, and and also here, um, I think I even may even have a playlist or something <laughs> for for rune divinations, but assuming I remember to put it there, but <laughs> anyway. So you can look for that as well. Um, but uh, sometimes I do herbal stuff. Sometimes I do more esoteric, magical stuff. You know, I, I'll do that too. So look for all that here. Different stuff goes up. But uh, the main stuff is the esoteric and magical influences on Sunday. And then this reading that happens on Mondays and Thursdays. So, so that's the basic schedule here. So that way you know. And if you haven't clicked subscribe, I'd love you to do that. That'd be cool. But I think I'm done shuffling here. Let's go ahead and take a rune. Um, I'm gonna. If you haven't been here before, the process is what we do here today is I'm gonna take a rune from the Elder Futhark bag, and that will be the rune that we'll start with. And then I'll do. A, um, I'll throw the uh, uh, elemental geomancy runes to create the geomancy rune, and we'll see what that's gonna be. Um, that's a different process. This, I'm just letting the, the runes fall through my hand. And the last one is the rune for the day. So we have Laguz or Flow. And then I'm going to use the four Geomancy. This is the one for air. So there's a single dot on one side and there's a there's two dots on the other. The single dot indicates an active influence, whereas the... Uh, uh, the dual dot is a passive influence. And they're arranged in the order of fire, air, water, and earth. And so let's see. Oh, I think we have Albus, which is, oh, I that might be right here on top. Oh, it is. So we have Albus. And Albus means the sage or wisdom or white hair. It could be someone with white hair, like, you know, like me. Uh, anyway, how sage I am, I don't know. But uh, in any event, uh, so we're going to have some wisdom. We're going to flow in, in wisdom source from source presence today. And then from there, we're going to take three cards and we're going to decide, you know, how much do they align or don't with the, uh, uh, with the runes. I mean, in a way, I, how I look at this is I look at the runes as being the over overall influence. And then the cards are sort of modifying a little bit, giving us more details or what have you. But sometimes, you know, if you get a bunch of major cards, you know, then you'll have really the same strength in, in, in terms of impact as you do with the runes. And so let's go ahead and we'll take our cards. If we need another one after the three, we'll take it. And I don't do reversals. I just read the whole energy of the card. All right. Well, we have one. Well, let's set those right over there. Bring them in front of me here. Move my stuff out of the way. All right. 
so we have the King of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, and uh, so we have Earth predominating is, is predominant in the in the reading today. Earth element, the Pentacles is, is the Earth element. Uh, fi fire, the fire element is wands. Air element uh, is represented by swords, and then the and then the water element is represented by cups. And so Pentacles then would be the the Earth element in our physical presence and form. Um, <coughs> and then the third card. Card 12 of the Major Arcana is the Hanged Man. Now, the Hanged Man, I think we're going to align with uh, uh, the runes, and so we'll put the Hanged Man in as the significator. Um, how we manifest abundance, uh, taking stock of everything we have, is the Seven of Pentacles. So that's one form of meditation when you're just standing there taking stock. Now, here we have the King who's taking stock of all he owns back to the kingdom, you know, focuses on himself. You could say that the focus here is get is bringing in the harvest for the family. So you see, it's a very different focus where, you know, so where in your meditation, where are you coming down at? You know, where is your alignment with? Is, is it with others, with the seven, or is it with the king and, and his own personal needs? So we have the energy of, of new beginnings, which aligns with today's energy. We, with the 10th, we're going to reduce that down to one. And that's the new, that's new beginnings and wholeness and unity and all of that. So I'm wondering here if we're going to have the same theme because we have the same numerology here. You know, without impulse control, let's look at this from a different standpoint. Uh, not from what is, but 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 what maybe it's modifying. If we're looking at flowing in wisdom and it's wisdom from spirit, the opposite of that would be getting would be uh, becoming stuck in the ego, which the king basically is. Uh, he's stuck in what he only wants for himself. There's there's he is surrounded by everything. All of his wealth. You see all the grapes surrounding him. That and he's got the big uh, coin right there. His back is to the kingdom. He's looking at the coin. Thinking only of his own needs. Happy at his at his fortune, certainly. But it's not it's not helping anybody. It's not like he's in the middle of the town square handing out this or that, or sitting down and listening to the needs of, of the people. He's not doing any of that. He's just wrapped up in his in his own mindset, in his own materialism, and that's where he lives. He doesn't care about what's happening around him. But whereas here, then we're going to talk about the hanged man and how it relates to both Albus and also uh, Laguz. But seven is about. Seven is about balance. It's about stepping back and <clears throat> taking the observer role. And so what he's done here after, after bringing in the harvest, now he's standing there and he's, he's, he's just looking at it. He's, he's trying to figure out, okay, did I get enough? Uh, how are we going to make it through the winter? But it's how are we going to make it through the winter? Not, uh, and I realize you don't see a family here, but it's implied. You know, he's building the wealth, but it's not just for himself. Here, we know this is just for himself because we see the kingdom in the background that he's turning his back on. So how do we get to this disparity? Well, it's about where we place our focus, isn't it? Here we have the, ang the hanged man. Here, this is surrender to spirit. It's alignment, it's transformation, it's change with the three energy of the 12 here, reducing, reducing to three. It's letting go, isn't it? But it's drawing down spirit into form. You know, you've got, you've got triplicities, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And so basically what we have here is you're stepping away again, like with the seven, you're stepping away from the, from the, from the experience 
and your and and what and and I mean sometimes this is this is uh, viewed as Odin. They draw it that way depending on the deck. Who's hanging upside down from the world tree, trying to gain knowledge and enlightenment? Well, again, that's that's Albus, all right, and the flow of spirit into form. That's what that is, and so essentially, you have one man that seems to have figured out how to do that for self and others, and the other that is just, you know, service to self. And it seems like that's the dichotomy, that's the paradigm, that's the polarity of experience that, that we have in form. There's always the us versus them mentality uh, with some people. Not so much with others, though. Others are more than happy to work in concert with one another, uh, to, to share in the experience, to, to, to basically share in the abundance of the experience. Um, but, but, but not this guy. This guy is just going to, you know... Let's do one more card. Uh, this guy's just going to sit there and, and accumulate his wealth and not share it with anyone. Not share of himself. Not I mean, e even if he's just sharing his time, even if you don't have wealth, maybe you, sh you share your time and experience. That's wealth. That's, that's worth something to somebody, in other words. To, have, to be able to have somebody in your life you can talk to and you can go to for advice. You know, uh, with, with the seven of... of uh, uh, of pentacles though so you know how to stand back and get your own advice whereas you know the king is just he's just absent he's just absent so you i mean who would you be able to go to in in this expression would it be to the king or the guy standing there in the field looking at his crop you know i think the answer is pretty obvious but again it's are you service to self or are you service to others and if you are service to others, then you're basically you're gaining from the wisdom of both Albus and the flow of spirit from Laguz. I'm going to take the 13th card this time for purely randomness sake. Well, we have a Knight of Wands. We see the three pyramids in the background. He's on a he's on a he's on a quest now. Knights are always on some kind of a quest. This is a quest to the Holy Land. Who knows? Maybe he's carrying Robert the Bruce's heart back to uh, the Holy Land. And yes, that happened. I'm related to the guy, so I'm also related to the guy who reportedly uh, uh, took the heart. The knight that took the heart. So that's kind of interesting. But you see how fiery it is, the red, the red horse. You see the, the red plume off of his uh, helmet. Now, he's not really in battle because the uh, visor's up, but at the same time, there's a lot of energy to what he's doing. So it's noble, it's virtuous, it's, it's uh, on behalf of, you know, the kingdom, supposedly. Maybe it's a Knights Templar, although you don't. You don't see the, the actual garb. So he's likely just a knight of the kingdom. You see the Ouroboros all over his, uh, his battle attire there. But the Knight of Wands is, uh, he's passionate, he's adventurous, he's, he's uh, uh, it's a young person, uh, but not the student. So a little bit older than the student, who, who is usually the page or the princess. He might also be called the prince in other decks. Um, but, uh, uh, in the, in the Rider Waite, they use the, they use the term knight and, uh, but it, but it, there's protection involved, but there's also progress. There's also risk. Um, so again, if we're going to flow in that direction, you know, we have to be willing to take the risk of, of, I mean, I don't know, trusting other people, maybe sharing the abundance with other people to let go of the control that the king has and to do things on behalf of others that's basically what a knight is doing they're doing things on behalf of others and so in that regard they're a service to self experience you know so they made their peace with everything and they've surrendered to spirit and they're out on a quest to assist others and to do for others and to help guide others so the wisdom and the flow would then follow the knight, wouldn't it, as well? And, and not so much the king. I, I mean, we just got rid of this, didn't we? And now we're flowing in spirit. Now we're flowing with someone who, 
who, who understands the relationship with the creator and the creative of spark within who's willing to take a look at what we have and, and, and dispense it as best we can to, to help other people, especially during a pandemic that the other guy turned his back on. See, it's like, it's almost as if the energy is shifting toward protection of others. So I really think that the, that this that the three cards, the Hanged Man, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Knight of Wands talk about a service to self-experience based on, on alignment in spirit. You see? As opposed to Mr. Ego here, who can't be bothered. So I guess that's the concept we're going to work with here this, this week. Um, uh, and then we'll check in again on Thursday uh, and see how that's going. Um, We'll draw more cards and more runes, of course. Uh, but I think that what we're going to be thinking about for the next few days is how can we manifest spirit in our lives and how can we turn that into a service to others approach, you know, where you're not just thinking about yourself and what you can do for yourself, and, and, and but you're thinking about how do I protect other people? You know, whether it's the, the whole masking up situation, I realize, you know, as more people get both their, their vaccines, it's like you think, well, I can take my mask off at the grocery store. Well, probably not yet um, until we know more. These are still emergency use vaccines, although I think they've pretty well figured out how people are going to respond to them uh, and how well they will. I mean, it's looking really positive. But I think that, that given the fact that uh, uh, there are people out there that are just not going to pay attention to it, um, we're in kind of that weird, okay, what do we do now moments? Do we let go of the masks or do we keep wearing them? Well, CDC is, is at least this, at this point saying, well, no, you need to still wear them when you're out and about. Um, and, uh, it's, and, and if you're in confined spaces as well, you know, um, it's the whole struggle of opening up businesses. You know, you have to do it safely. You can't hurt your, 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 your employees and you can't hurt the people that come in, your customers. And so there has to be some kind of greater understanding that we seem to not be able to get through in this country. Instead, we have this weird struggle of, I'm not going to wear a mask. You can't make me. Well, it, it's not about making you. It's about everybody seeing the wisdom, the albus, and flowing together in harmony to get through something quickly. We could have had this dealt with, but oh no, 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 here we are. And, and so I think that, you know, this could even have to do with that. Are we going to take a spiritual warrior approach of the Knight of Wands, you know, uh, or are we going to simply think only of ourselves? And for me, I, I, I'm a believer in science. And so for me, um, it's a no brainer. I mean, you're not, I'm not giving up any personal freedom. Why would anyone think that? I see people all the time in the stores wearing masks, uh, during the winter time, you know, and either they're out of the hospital or they were like my next door neighbor. He would wear a mask around people when he was battling cancer. Lots of people do this for lots of reasons. They're protecting themselves. They're also usually from pathogens that other people are carrying. And whereas it might not bother anybody else, for someone with a compromised immune system, it will. And there's a lot of, lot of people out there with compromised immune systems, not just people who fight cancer and on chemo or radiation, that you're, you're, you're not, I'm not talking about just those, the amount of autoimmune disorders that are out there. I mean, I'm, I'm recovering from, uh, or I'm in recovery from uh, uh, severe rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune condition. Now I'm well, but it doesn't mean that it's not still sitting there and something could trigger it like a, like an out of control, uh, virus that we don't know anything about. Right? So there's lots of people, anybody with asthma, anybody with diabetes, think about the numbers of people that just suffer from those things, not to mention all the other autoimmune stuff that's out there. All right. It isn't just people that are that have cancer or get organ transplants. It it's it's not just that. Autoimmune issues are plague a lot of people. So to think that it's not you <laughs> it's not just the visibly ill that suffer from this. You may not realize somebody has an issue until they tell you, right? 
Uh, but the bottom line is, is that's so prevalent in our country. We have to assume most people have autoimmune issues. There, we just have to assume that our, our immune systems are being challenged in a way that, that's not survivable for them. They're, go they're going to have issues, right? They're not going to stay intact, not the way things are here. So if, if that's the case, then we have, to, we have to be in protection mode for everyone, you see? And so either you have that mindset or you don't. And I really see that as an either or. Uh, it's it's you, you are either service to self or you're service to others. And the thing about the nice part about being service to others is you get taken care of within that. You know, it's the reciprocity that happens when you give yourself of your time, of your experience, you know, of your attention to someone else. You get it in return. That love comes back to you in return, you see. So you have this really nice flow from spirit, this nice lagoos energy that you're dealing with. You know, from the standpoint of wisdom instead of from the standpoint of childish ego. So it's like all the lawmakers that don't want to go through a, a metal detector to make sure they're not carrying a weapon into the floor of, of, of the Senate or the, or, or the House of Representatives. It's like, oh, I, I can't be bothered to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yes, you are. And you should want to. You should, do, you should be a patriot. If you're a congressperson, member of Congress, you should be a patriot. That's, what, that's how that's defined right now. All right? But no, they're stuck here. Starting to see the dichotomy here? Yeah, this is the polarity we experience here. It's not gender related. Not at all. It's whether or not you're service to self or service to others. That's the polarity. Are you bringing spirit into your interactions or are you pure ego? We know who those people are. We know the pure ego people. It's obvious. They don't care about anybody but themselves. It's obvious, right? In other words, we see you. <laughs> so I think that, that that's really uh, what we're going to explore here for the week. We'll, we'll check in again on Thursday and see how that's going and uh, otherwise... You know, maybe we'll turn a quarter and we'll talk about something else. But uh, again, think about how you manifest that sort of thing in your life. Are you thinking about others? Or are you thinking only about yourself? So, anyhow, thanks for watching. And uh, check out the blog over it. I'm going to put up the magical forecast here in a little while, and you can check that out. It's not just for people who do magic, but, but you know, it's, it's kind of geared toward that. But there's a lot of planetary aspects and stuff in there that can help you astrologically with kind of guiding your day. And, uh, uh, you know, so it's kind of fun to read. So whether you're a, a witch or a magician or not. So anyway, there's just stuff in there for that. Anyway, well, what are you going to do? It's a witch blog. I don't know what to say. It's just what you're going to find there. So anyway. That and herbal stuff and, you know, all that good stuff anyway. So thanks for watching and, and do check out the blog. Links are below the video to wherever I am. And uh, be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.